Alison McConnell, the creator of the Power Breathe, is Professor of Applied Physiology at Brunel University's Centre for Sports Medicine and Human Performance. Please make sure that you view the chapter headed guidance for patients before instructing them on how to use the Power Breathe. In order to ensure patients get the most out of Power Breathe training, it is advisable to spend a few minutes coaching them in the correct breathing technique. Now, this does not differ in any way from that described in Chapter 6, People with Breathing Problems, but the recommended training protocol differs slightly. Now, this is because it is based upon the current clinical evidence base for inspiratory muscle training in patients with respiratory disease. Research indicates that inspiratory muscle training loads must exceed 30% of the patient's maximal inspiratory muscle strength in order to be effective. There is also evidence that heavier loads yield greater improvements in inspiratory muscle strength. If you do not have access to a means of measuring this strength, follow this simple routine. Training should consist of 15 minutes of continuous breathing through the power breathe. On day one of training, the patient should set the power breathe to level one. If the patient is able to complete 15 minutes continuously, the training level should be set to two on day two. This incremental increase should be continued until a level is reached that can only be tolerated for 15 minutes. Once this is achieved, the patient should train at this level for one week, after which the level should be increased by half a turn per week. If you have access to a means of measuring inspiratory muscle strength, training should start at a load equivalent to 30 to 40% of maximal inspiratory pressure, or MIP. See the load conversion chart on page 16 of the user manual for more details. The training load should then be increased by half a turn each day for the next 7 to 10 days until up to 60 to 80% of baseline MIP is reached. After that, the load should be increased weekly to maintain the training load at 60 to 80% of the patient's new inspiratory muscle strength. Now, the first few days of training are the most challenging for the patient, who will require careful and sensitive coaching, including time for short breaks. They should be encouraged to tolerate the breathless sensation induced by training and to increase the training load progressively. Typically, increases in load of 5 to 10% per week can be achieved. The user manual contains a training diary to help you and the patient keep track of their training. We recommend that this is used and that you review it at any patient consultations. If you would like a copy of a written guide to inspiratory muscle training in the clinical setting, please visit the official PowerBreathe website at powerbreathe.com. <laughs>